and that is this alleged Russian spy ring. Uh, lots of top guests to come before we go to them, but this spy ring is dominating the news. Um, wonderful headline in one of the papers: "Spies who came in from suburbia." Uh, echoes of spies who came in from the spy who came in from the cold. But three members of a suspected ring arrested by counterterrorism police, living just a mile uh, from an RAF base, Northolt, used by government ministers, uh, VIPs, uh, a diplomatic corps, and of course the royal family as well. Bulgarian nationals: uh, two men and one woman detained during a series of intelligence-led raids across London and also in Great Yarmouth in Norfolk. Two other people arrested but bailed. Uh, but the charges have been brought back in February, interestingly. It's, we've taken so long to, uh, for us to all find out about it. Uh, to these three believed to be Bulgarian citizens uh, who have been accused of spying uh, for Russia. Uh, and uh, they are being charging, have been charged with possessing 19 fake documents with, uh, the court say, uh, improper intention, including passports, ID cards, a driving license for the UK, Bulgaria, France, Italy, Spain, Croatia, Slovenia, Greece, and the Czech Republic. Well, let's talk about this with journalist and author uh, John Sweeney. He's live for us in Ukraine. He's also the author of Killer in the Kremlin, a book about Vladimir Putin and his, uh, well, deadly methods. Good morning to you, John. Dobre uh, den, Julia. Oh, sorry, I should speak in... Uh... <laughs> you gave yourself away there. Now, look, no, no, you... no, 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 I'm, no, 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 I'm not a Russian spy, but who knows? I mean, who knows? I mean, that's what a Russian spy would say. Look, we're making light of this, and we, not, we must remember, this is a live case, these are charges, and we. And it's probably best if we sort of move away from the specifics of these three Bulgarians who have been charged, two of us, I say, out on bail uh, after arrest. Um, but, you know, we know there are these spy rings. We know, we, we know this isn't just stuff from, you know, John le Carre novels. We know you know, Anna Chapman, the Russian spy, very glamorous Russian spy now, a huge star on Russian TV, uh, was uh, exposed in Washington in 2010. We know there are sleeper cells. But um, how, how widespread is this method for not just Russia, but other hostile states and indeed for countries like the UK as well? Well, let's remember there's a great difference between our spies and the spies who work for dictatorships. Essentially, our spies have to more or less live within um, the rules of civilised society. And what they do is circumscribed by the society we are. There are no such rules for Russian spies. Um, and obviously everybody is innocent until proven guilty. But we should also know as well as this case, and, and by the way, the thing that made me kind of fall out of my pram this morning, I don't actually live in a pram, that's a joke, but um, was that the, the spy ring was based in Great Yarmouth. Yes. I mean, my, uh, whatever, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens in the court, but Great Yarmouth, crikey, that was something that, uh, that really came at me. But just yesterday, a former retired FBI officer was uh, was found guilty and pleaded guilty to effectively helping Oleg Deripaska, a Russian oligarch, from um, uh, to help. He was being investigated by the FBI, and what does Deripaska do, or his people do? They they reach out to this former FBI guy who used to work in the, the Citadel of the FBI in New York, and the. The, the guy who pleaded guilty, uh, pleaded guilty to aiding the Deripaska effort to yeah. undermine the investigation into him. Right. I mean, so that, that's the thing. Look, there, there, there are often you know, wheels within wheels within wheels. That we, but, but we also know that when we've seen Russian spies and not necessarily sleeper cells or, or others, but we actually they are Russian agents in the in this country um, doing you know, very very clear clear cut very illegal work like uh, poisoning. Uh, Sergei Skripal and his uh, his daughter Yulia uh, uh, attempting to um, a killing uh, Litvinenko successfully. Uh, we, numerous other cases being raised about Russian uh, emigres who have mysteriously fallen out of windows and had mysterious heart attacks after being in good health previously. Um, there are really big concerns about this. Um, do you think that I mean, one of the questions we're asking the audience this morning is how safe do you think Britain is? Do you think that we uh, we are you know our, our security forces are Monitor, they know who these people are, they're monitoring them, or could there be hundreds of such people living in this country that we don't know about? I think it's, I don't know the scale of the numbers, but absolutely the idea that these are the only people who are working um, illegally, that's yeah. the allegation. Um, as Russian spies, I think there are more. Um, and 
there's a friend of mine, Chris Donnelly, who was the the Russian um, strategic advi- sorry the strategic advisor on Russian to four um, secretaries general of NATO. And um, Chris, the way Chris puts it, like uh, he puts it like this: We are at war with Russia. Now, this isn't a war of, of of bangs and bullets, but it's a war of influence and intelligence and control. Yeah. And we don't know we're at war with Russia. And so I asked him, well, so how well have we been doing at this war that we don't know we're fighting? And he says, badly. (laughs) So what's interesting about this case, and we can't talk about it because of the legal process, we can't talk about the details. But what's fascinating about this case is that it shines a light on Russia's war against us. And also, you know, here I am in Ukraine in Kyiv, and just the other night, there were kind of strange lights in the sky, and this is basically the Russians firing rockets at us and Ukrainian air defense knocking them out of the sky again and again and again. Now, this is a very visible war. It's all too brutal. There are friends of mine who've been killed in this war. But we have a wider war with Russia, with Vladimir yeah. Putin's Russia, and this is... Uh, this you know, this the, the, is indicative of it. Can I ask you about one specific thing? You're a journalist in Ukraine, you're following it, you're an independent yeah. journalist. One of the big concerns about this, these allegations, is that these uh, uh, the, these three Bulgarian citizens not just having fake ID, driving licence passports and ID cards, but also having fake journalism ID, press cards, for American TV companies, Discovery and the National Geographic channels, uh, and clothing with the idents on. You, they the police have alleged it's been used to carry out surveillance operations against targets in London, Germany and Montenegro. There is already a big concern for the safety of journalists. More and more journalists are are facing not just, you know, being accidentally killed in attacks in war, but but actually being deliberately targeted. How much of that is is a concern for you as a journalist when we know how important it is to to have independent voices verifying what's happening on the ground during wars? Well, so what's happened recently is that Russia has been deliberately targeting places where journalists hang out. Yeah. My friend Victoria Amelina was killed in June. She was in the um, the Ria pizza restaurant in Kramatorsk. Um, actually, with uh, the uh, my normal fixer, Dima, he, he was driving her and uh, some Colombian journalists who were there to see for themselves what's happening on the ground, and bang, they survive Victoria yeah. uh, it, so are you, are, you, are you concerned that that's going, that is happening more and more? I think it's happening more and more, and I hate it that, that um, well, let, let's see what happens in this case, but the idea that Russian spies are pretending to be journalists, that's crazy. That, yeah, it, makes, or, it, it, makes, it does make it more dangerous, doesn't it? We'll have to leave it there. John Sweeney, journalist, author of Kill It in the Kremlin, his life for us there uh, from Ukraine.